With the launch of AMD's Ryzen processor line, the whole CPU marketplace has become a little bit of a guessing game, especially at the higher end where Ryzen is currently competing. And in the mid tier and the lower end, we're getting sort of geared up for the R5s to launch in the second quarter, which will likely disrupt that market as well. What may be mostly overlooked though, is what motherboard you should be buying for your new Ryzen part if you're deciding to go in the Ryzen family for your CPUs. So let's take a look at what motherboards are up for grabs for Ryzen. Now, if you are just setting up your Ryzen PC right now, as of March 12th, the market is somewhat hard to get a hold of just because there are so few boards actually available right now. Now, obviously there are several boards here that are being manufactured and will be actually on the market soon, but you'll notice a lot of back order buttons and auto notify buttons, and that's not limited to just Newegg either. That's on Amazon or really any other major retailer that you may go to to find your motherboards unless you happen to be living near a micro center, which seems like it has a lot better availability than other uh, retailers do. So if you're looking for the entry level bare bones, I just want to get into the Ryzen product line, uh, then you're going to be looking within the probably the sub $100 price point. Now, I would avoid the Gigabyte Micro ATX board here because going with a full ATX board will give you a little bit better expandability down the road. Also, components will be a little bit more spread out, so you won't run into quite as much heat issues with the motherboard itself, though that hasn't been really a big factor in my testing anyways. But within the about $100 price point, you really have three options that are available right now. There's an ASRock $90 board, a B350 board, an ASUS Prime B350 board, and a Gigabyte B350 board. And really, you're just going to be looking at the uh, consumer uh, reviews of these boards, as well as considering your own past experience. I, for example, have always liked ASUS's implementation of UEFI. Um, I find it very easy to use and very clean. So if it were me, I would just go ahead and buy the ASUS Prime B350 board. However, if you had a good experience in the past with a Gigabyte board or ASRock boards and really enjoy your experience with those, then by all means, at that point, really, it, it's a toss-up. It's personal preference unless there is a major board problem that is repeatedly coming up which is where the reviews come into place. So just make sure you do your good background research there and select the board maker that is right for you. It's worth pointing out as well that B350 does support Crossfire uh, configurations with graphics cards. So if you are running AMD Crossfire, maybe you have a pair of RX 480s for example, then B350 is probably right for you and will support that dual GPU configuration. However, it does not support NVIDIA's SLI implementation. For that, you need an X370 board. Now, if you are looking for an X370 board, um, I hate to tell you, first of all, you're pretty much out of luck with availability online. Unless you live near a micro center, you're gonna be waiting for a while. Now, the X370 boards, to me, are split into two different camps. There are the extremely high-end ones, like the ROG Crosshair, uh, six hero from asus and there are the cheaper ones which you can find like the asrock fatality x370 here for about 150 dollars if you are a normal consumer that is building your computer on a budget i highly recommend buying a lower end x370 board maybe like the asus prime x370 which i've had great luck with by the way it's running in my own system and take that extra money that you save by not buying the most expensive motherboard in the stack and invest it in a better graphics card or maybe more ram or some other thing like storage that you can actually tangibly benefit from the reason i say that is i have not seen anything that indicates that these high-end motherboards get a far better overclock from Ryzen chips than do some of these lower-end ones. A good example of that is I have seen very few reviewers that have been able to, at reasonable voltages, get above 4.0 gigahertz on the Ryzen 1800X, and I am currently running my system at 4.0 gigahertz on the Ryzen 1800X, but I'm using the Asus Prime X370 Pro board. So, 
that's a good place to save money in your setup is by buying a slightly cheaper board and spending that money elsewhere or pocketing it and just buying games with it. And everything else holds true that I already mentioned about the cheaper B350 boards. Aesthetically, you should consider that as well as other reviews. If you have a side panel window, obviously you want your motherboard to match your setup as well as possible. So color configuration will actually be a consideration for you. In addition, you should obviously just check reviews of any board that you're planning on buying to see A, availability, and B, if there are any outstanding problems. For example, I have heard that the Asus Prime X370 board had some that shipped with BIOS that were not compatible with Ryzen processors. Now, that's a pretty big issue because that renders the board completely unusable because the, it left the factory with the wrong BIOS. Now, mine did not suffer from that issue, but that is a potential monkey wrench in the works for some people that have bought that board. Now, I haven't heard any updates or even looked for any updates to see whether that is still the issue or an ongoing problem or anything like that, but those types of problems are what you're looking for when you read reviews and news articles about these motherboards. As with any purchase involved while building your PC, make sure to just do your due diligence. That will serve you best. Nothing I say will be able to convince you to buy a specific motherboard because I have had my hands on one and I cannot reasonably compare it to a lot of other motherboards on the market, whether it be B350 boards or X370 boards. So you are best served by just doing as much research as you really can or reasonably can and then come up with a very informed consumer choice. Most importantly to the motherboard buying experience is just identifying as a consumer what you need your motherboard to do. If you're on SLI, obviously you're going to be looking at X370 boards. If you're doing Crossfire and you're planning on doing some overclocking, but really not planning on taking advantage of anything else that a motherboard has to offer other than just gaming on your SATA-based hard drives or even solid state drives, then B350 will do just fine for you. So it's really a matter of identifying what board you actually need, not just what board you want, and then making that happen within the budget of building your computer. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like down below, share, subscribe, all those things are great. You can follow me on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. You can also find me on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. Convenient that they're both the exact same. So I'm gonna go ahead and let YouTube queue up something else that uh, you may enjoy from my channel. I'm Shane from Hoosier Hardware. I'll see you guys in the next video.